Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya na Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ala ba'd. Ayyullah habba, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and guide you and forgive us and forgive you and bless us with ikhlas with the bad Allah sunnah to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ayyullah habba, when we look at what the various people are calling to, we have to analyze what whoever we listen to, whether it be the YouTube, whether it be a tape, whether it be a CD, whoever you take knowledge from, you have to put what they say on the scale. You have to have a criterion to discern what is truth and what is falsehood, or you can be led astray. And ayu ala habba, none of us wants to be led astray because the Prophet ﷺ said, Kullu bid'atin dalala wa kullu dalalatin fin nar. The Prophet ﷺ said, every innovation, every going astray, uh, every innovation is a going astray, and every going astray leads to the hellfire. And which one of you volunteers to go to the hellfire? Wa'iyadim billah min balik, and may Allah protect us and you from the hellfire and the people of misguidance. Ayu al habba, we have to look to the evidences of the Quran and the Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. So whenever we get emotional about a particular speaker, or we become excited about a particular speaker, or we blind follow a particular speaker, or we want to defend a particular speaker with our life and our wealth and our property, regardless of whether they are in a, accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah in their preachings and in their lessons and in what they call the people to, then this is an incredibly dangerous thing. And I want to leave us with a very brief statement, which is a beautiful statement by Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah with regards to this. قال الشيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية رحمه الله تعالى قال من فارق دليل ضل السبيل ولا دليل إلا ما جاء به رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية رحمه الله تعالى said whoever leaves the evidence has misguided uh, become misguided on the path and there is no evidence except with that which the Messenger وسلم, came with. This is incredibly important, Ayu al Habba, because many of the people, they explain the uh, hadith and they explain uh, ayats according to their desires and according to that which conforms to their particular methodology, which contradicts the methodology of the Salaf of this Ummah, which contradicts the pious predecessors, which contradicts the methodology of the Imam al Muttaqeen Muhammad ibn Abdullah. So, Ayu al Habba, Look to who you take your knowledge from. Look to those, what they call to, and put it on that scale. You have a scale now. Look at the scale of Dalil. The scale, does it come from the Quran? And if, it, if the answer is yes, and it is in accordance with the understanding of the Sahaba, then take it. Does it come from the authentic sunnah, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? If the answer is yes, and it is in accordance with how the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anu majma'in practiced it and understood it, and the salaf of this ummah understood it, then take it and accept it. Is it in accordance with the, with the ijma of the ummah or the ijma of the, the imams of the sunnah were upon? If the answer is yes, what the consensus was, then we accept it, we take it, and we take that into our creed, and we take that into our practice, and we ask Allah the Almighty that Allah makes this a benefit for us, and a criterion, you have a criterion, put, put what you listen to on that scale, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil, any mistakes that I've made are from myself, any, and anything that was good was from Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya Muhammad.